I do uh, cable splicing training and crane training for Electrical Training Alliance all over the country. Okay. So these, these guys are taking uh, the module classes, Module 1 and Module 4, in preparation for the NCSCB, the National Cable Splicing Certification. And, and by the time these guys uh, completed with this course, they'll be well prepared to, you know, to take that exam. And this is a national certification, so they could go to any utility, any military facility, government facility, air traffic control tower, that would be recognized as competence in splicing high voltage cables. They get to take down each layer of cable all the way down to the conductor and then rebuild it using basic uh, hand applied tapes and materials. In this lesson, we're going to be using basic hand tools to repair the cables. Uh, so in the field, if, if you did break a tool, uh, you wouldn't know how to do it uh, using basic hand tools. Splicing high voltage cables uh, is, a, is a very precise process. The techniques have to be followed very closely in order to get a good splice with um, little or no resistance to the voltage passing through the cable. There's a lot of aspects to underground construction that make it much more dangerous than normal construction because we're working around live energy sources. It could be gas, it could be electric, uh, but if these energy sources are opened up and exposed, then again, an ignition source or electricity going to ground through a human being, these are all very dangerous things. So safety is paramount. We can never do enough to inform our workers how dangerous their work environment is, nor can we do enough to inform the public on how dangerous exposed underground utility work sites can be. And we routinely deal with intrusions into our work zones from automobiles, pedestrians, bicyclists, motorbikes. People need to understand that this is a dangerous area and they need to respect the work zone boundaries and the hard work. Our guys have enough trouble just keeping track of each other in the work, let alone a pedestrian or, you know, bicyclist blundering into the work zone. So very dangerous and we do everything we can to keep it as safe as possible. You're, you could basically be building a bomb for the next guy. If, if this is uh, done improperly, you want to make sure that every layer of that cable, you're not damaging that underlying layer when you're preparing the cable. It's extremely dangerous when a, when a cable splice fails in a confined space uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, you know, the voltage, the voltage there, the, uh, the smoke, uh, the fire um, that, that occurs, and uh, just being in a confined space, you know, not having, not having that oxygen, not having a way out. It's very, it's very critical. You know, as a cable splicer, you have to almost consider yourself a cable surgeon. You're basically remanufacturing that cable in the field under adverse conditions. That's, that's what you're doing as a cable splicer. You're, you're uh, surgically operating on that cable. And just like you, when you go to the hospital to get surgery, you don't want that, uh, that doctor to leave a, a knife or a, a tool in your body. You don't want to leave any contaminants on that splice to eventually cause a failure. There's several aspects to this splicing that make it really important for a worker to be skilled at it. Safety is probably the biggest thing. And the other thing is to create any kind of work that somebody does, that work should have a long life. This stuff is going in the ground. You don't want to have to dig six feet down to get it and fix it in a year. It needs to last for, you know, a decade or more. You know, it's critical that you take care and pride in, in doing this type of work. Uh, a little mistake could, you know, cause a cause a death or, or a dismemberment or a permanent injury. So great care has to be taken. You have to have qualified people to do this work. Mm -hmm.